Hey y'all, what's happening? Chinese here, also known as China L. Colston, actress and independent filmmaker here in Brooklyn. Um, so I wanted to, in honor of Women's History Month, I wanted to talk about um, a woman character um, in a Shakespearean play titled Othello. Um, her name is Desdemona, and I remember in 1995, yes, 1995, I remember Lawrence Fishburne, who is my favorite actor, um, one of my favorite actors next to Al Pacino and Teresa Randall. Anyway, um, Ebony Magazine, it was all this promotion about Lawrence Fishburne would be doing, uh, playing the role of Othello in the film adaptation of the Shakespearean play, written and directed by Oliver Parker, and it was going to be released in 1995. It was released in 1995, and I remember um, Lawrence Fishburne being on Jet Magazine, and I was so excited. Um, now, I remember, um, you know, reading Romeo and Juliet in high school and actually getting a, a, a passing grade on my report on it. So I, I was intrigued by it. I did enjoy the story. But again, the language was so foreign to me as an American Black woman, of course. Um, so, but I, but I was still able to enjoy the story of Romeo and Juliet, right? So fast forward um, to me as an adult, and it's 1995, and I see that my favorite actor will be in this Shakespearean play adapted for the screen, and I'm like, oh God, this language is so out there. So I'm gonna go see it because Lawrence Fishburne is in it, right? So I remember in Chicago, for those who don't know, I'm from Chicago, and I remember I didn't ask anybody to go with me because I didn't think anybody else would want to go. Um, and I went to the Performing Arts Cinema in Chicago on Michigan Avenue. Um, I think that's what it's called. It's been a second. And um, I remember going in there, a beautiful cinema, um, very artsy fartsy. And I remember when the movie was over, it was literally three black people myself this man and his toddler and we both like nodded at each other did you enjoy it yes i enjoyed it so i was so enamored by the character of desdemona i like i liked because i remember just being very forthright i remember like oh god he's with some white woman as opposed to a black woman i want to see black love blah 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 but when i as i saw the movie and as the story unfolded i began to appreciate desdemona and like she really loves this cat like she is feeling this dude she's feeling his character his bravery his intelligence his um his sensitivity, his balance, right? And I like that in a man too. And she was a really nice person, the character Desdemona. She was so nice and um, sweet and idealistic and very naive. And I just remember being so intrigued by this story. Um, shout out to Lawrence Fishburne, who was stellar in this movie. Um, and the woman who portrayed Desdemona, I forget her name, but she was wonderful. She displays such um, vulnerability and sensuality and kindness and uh, naivete, and and um, at many points she she conveyed you know dread for her life. Um, it's so funny, and I was like, oh, I really and and shout out to Kenneth Branagh who also played Iago, the evil Iago. Iago is a character who was very sly, very slick. Um, he was, he, he would, he had the appearance, um, he gave the appearance of being friendly, of being loyal to, uh, to Othello, who was a black commander in the Venetian army. Um, he had a great reputation, you know, he was, he had, he was charming, he had charisma, he had swag, you know, he was, he was, he was that dude. And Iago was very envious of him. Iago was hating on everybody. Iago couldn't stand nobody in the village. He, like, it was, he, he got off on deceiving people, hurting people. Even if that meant death, he didn't care. Like, he just was evil at the core. He had no redeeming qualities, but he was, but Kenneth Bernard played him in such a juicy, fun, and clever way that you just, you was just so in, like, 
engrossed by his performance. So shout out to Kenneth Bernard, wonderful actor. He was incredible. He broke the fourth wall by speaking directly to the to us as an audience in the movie. I mean, the whole cast killed it. Everybody was on fire, right? But um, and there was a woman, uh, a character about a character by the name of Amelia, who was Desdemona's homegirl, right? And she was like, "Yo, let me let me tell you something. Let me hip you up to to this game. These men out here, they just want women women for sports. They're not really feeling us. Outside, once they finish having sex with us, they're done, honey. They don't care. So if we start cheating on them, then why are you gonna have an attitude? We're just doing, we're just modeling ourselves after you, right? So Emily was like a wiser, like girl. Listen, this is what's going on." She was like the handmaid, the assistant to um, Desdemona, who was very, again, again, naive and idealistic and like, you know, I'm just, I just love my husband. I'm loyal to him and he's loyal to me and, you know, la, la, la. Now, Desdemona, she was sweet and all that. However, she did betray her father's trust by sneaking on the low and getting married to Othello without asking her father or having Othello ask her father for permission. Her father was a senator. You know, he was, he had a great reputation and she, you know, she did some sneaky shit. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's what she did. So she was sweet and innocent in one regard, but then, you know, rebellious because she wanted to be, she wanted to be married to Othello, this black man, or they call him a Moor. He's from North Africa. He's still black, whatever. Um, and she's Venetian, or she's a European woman, and she was just feeling out there, and she loved him, and he loved her, and they were like, we're going to just elope, and they were both grown, and we're going to do this, and Iago slick, but, um, and uh, some, uh, Rodrigo ended up telling the father while he was asleep that they went off and got married, her, that Desdemona and Othello got married, and the father was upset, you know, again, she was his only child, and they had a great relationship, a really close one. He thought they did. She just was like, I want to marry him. And I'm a, I know my father will not approve of me marrying this black man, even though he's a commander, respected, and he's protecting our nation as the commander of the, our army. But it's kind of like, yeah, I respect what you're doing for our country as a commander of our military, but I don't want you to marry my daughter. I can kiki and laugh and have dinner and talk shit, but I don't want you to marry my daughter. So anyway, Desdemona was on some like, I'm a Mary, I'm going to marry this dude because he has great integrity and bravery and he's balanced and he's sexy. So as you know, the movie unfolded, Iago basically was trying to get, um, you know, Iago was hating, was a hater. Okay. He wanted the position that Othello had, um, worked for of being a commander of their military, having integrity and a great reputation. Iago envied that. Right, he envied the relationship that um, this is my interpretation um, that Othello and Desdemona had, even though Iago was married to Emilia, who was hip and um, uh, um, Desdemona to the game of men. He was just that dude, he just wanted everybody to be conquered and, and to be killed. He didn't care, it was entertaining entertainment for him. So, um, because I really like this story and the interpretation of these actors in this film adaptation, I was like, well, I want to learn a Shakespearean monologue and I wanted to learn Desdemona. Although the character Desdemona is European, Venetian, I connected with her emotionally. I love romance and, um, you know, a balanced, sexy alpha man, you know? So I related to her and like, you know, she just, she just wanted a great relationship. Um, and, and Othello and her had a wonderful relationship at the beginning of the film, at the beginning of the story. They were loyal and loving and, and affectionate and wanted to be in each other's company. Um, and then, you know, Iago jacked up everything. So um, I remember um, Shakespeare, Chicago Shakespeare Theater Company were having um, annual auditions. It's not called annual auditions, but I forgot. But then they were having open auditions, basically. And I I was in a play at the time, and there was this gentleman, an actor. He's a wonderful actor. I don't recall his name, but he had his undergrad in theater. And in the, when you get your undergrad in theater, for those who don't know, you know they uh, Shakespeare is one of the um, you have to learn a Shakespeare play. You have to do a Shakespeare play and all the other classic playwrights. That's what I've been told. I don't 
I didn't go get my undergrad in theater. Um, I learned theater through at ETA Theater um, through the Stanislavski method. Learned the Stanis Stanislavski method through my acting teacher, Cora Harold Johnson. Rest in peace to him. Was a brilliant um, director, writer, playwright, and teacher. So I didn't. Uh, we didn't. I didn't learn Shakespeare. However, this guy did. He had the experience. Um, uh, um, and he was a fine actor, so I asked him to help me, basically to help me prepare for the Shakespearean audition, you, you, doing the Desdemona um, monologue. And I remember it was so challenging for me because, you know, like I had to enunciate. Um, he was like stress; you have to hit your, your end consonant, um, you know. And I, I think it's such a Chicago thing, like we kind of like. We don't really hit our end consonant. <laughs> um, so that was an adjustment. Um, like tapping into her emotionality, that's, that is, I've been acting long enough, or even at that time, I had uh, developed the emotional skill set to convey the various emotional diversity of a character. So that was not a, the challenge for me. The challenge for me was hitting those end consonants while being emotionally truthful as a character. Um, yeah, so he really had to really, really stress hitting the end consonants. Also showing a little more diversity than I thought she needed um, in this particular monologue. As she, Cause what's happening in this monologue that I'm going to show you um, that I filmed uh, a while ago. In this monologue, she is approaching the evil demon, Iago. Again, Iago comes across like he's sweet and he's kind and he's down for you and he's willing to help you however he can when this demon is really out to, he's really out to, for your demise. He want you to be conquered, to be killed. And he, again, it's entertainment for him. It's nothing for him, right? He's like a sociopath, like he's totally disconnected, emotionally detached from people, but he gives on the impression that he cares. And so she goes to him and is like, in his monologue and trying to persuade him because Othello at the time thinks that she has betrayed him, cheated on him with with his um, friend or comrade, right? And she's going to all people and Iago, and Iago is the reason that Othello thinks because he's been, he was all up in, Othello's ear lying to him saying it suggesting that Desdemona is cheating on Othello with his comrade a gentleman who's under his leadership right um when in fact that is not the case she's completely innocent they are not interested in each other like they both love and respect Othello so much they would never betray such a trust but um Iago slick sly but is given the impression that that is not that it that is the case that they are cheating and they're not so she's going to him asking him to help her persuade othello or to tell othello that she's very innocent that she loves othello she would never betray him she's going to the devil asking the devil to help her when in fact the devil is the reason that there is even any friction and hostility hostility between uh, desdemona and othello so anyway i just love the idea of her being so fragile and um, fearful. She's like, she's experiencing fear and disappointment and anger. And, and she's just, she's desperate to get back into the good graces of Othello. And she's going to the wrong person to have that help that happen. So I just love that she was so like scared and really like begging him to, um, begging Iago to help her get in, get back into good graces with Othello. And she's just so sweet and she's so naive. Like, girl, you're talking to the devil right now, but she has no idea. But the devil doesn't show himself. The devil comes like comes across like he's your friend and he wants to help you. And in fact, that's the, quite the opposite. So that's why I wanted to do um, Desdemona. And she has such a, an affinity for romance and love and loyalty and she's feeling somewhat hopeless but he she's hoping that this will this will work he will be able to help her and that is so far from the truth so anyway i hope you all enjoy my interpretation of desdemona trying to persuade um iago to uh tell Othello that she loves him and she will not betray him this is my uh, rendition all right y'all take care peace chinese
Chicago. What shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him. For by this light of heaven, I know not how I lost him. Here, I knew. If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse of thought or deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any sense delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet, and ever did, ever will, though he do shake me off the beggarly divorcement. Love him dearly. Comfort forswear me. Unkindness may do much. It is unkindness may defeat my life. But never taint my love. I cannot say whore. It does abhor me now I speak the word. To do the act that might the addition earn. Not the world's mass of vanity could make me.